Well, happy Friday, Hebron Christian Academy family. Uh, it's great to be here with you again. Uh, I'm Dr. Taylor, the new head of school at Hebron. And uh, as I mentioned last week, hey, listen, we're thrilled to be here each and every Friday. If you didn't get, get a chance to see the video last week, each Friday, uh, I will be putting out a video and uh, we'll do two things in that video. One, we'll, we'll uh, step into God's word and, and do a brief devotional. And, uh, and then also we'll talk about one academic issue uh, that ties directly in with our school. And uh, last week we talked about an issue directly related to COVID-19. This week we're going to do the same thing and uh, just so that we're all on the same page. Uh, but hey, listen, let me, uh, let me jump in with, with a word from, from God's word here today. Uh, a super powerful verse uh, for me, frankly, anytime I've been worried or concerned or have had any, any sense of fear over a particular subject is Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10. It's a simple little verse. The first part of it says, be still and know that I am God. And, and, and there, in that little teeny verse, there really are, are some pretty complex understandings about who God is. And so the first part is be still. That, that a lot of times when we are nervous or when we are afraid or when we are unsure, the way that we react to that a lot of times is, man, people will hop on social media and they're going to they're gonna type out social media. They're going to put their stuff out there for everyone to see. Or they react with this kind of frenetic energy that, that, that just consumes them, that I, I – got a couple of friends who every time they're super nervous, man, they've got to go and clean the house. And so their, their houses, they've got to be buzzing around and doing everything. But I love this verse. It says, Hey, just be still, just be still and recognize God, right? Just take a chill, relax, understands God's sovereignty. So be still. And then the second part there is, and no. And I love the fact that, that here, there's no concept of knowledge. There's no guess of knowledge. It's in no, that you can have absolute confidence in God. Hey, listen, how reassuring that is, right? When we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I have a, a good pastor friend of mine, he says, we know because we know because we know that, that hey, we know that God has us, that God's not upstairs uh, uh, looking down on us saying, wow, hey, I did not see the COVID-19 thing coming. Boy, that really took me by surprise, right? That's not what God's doing. We can be still and we can know that he is God, that we're not God. Hey, us trusting in even science, us trusting in certainly media, us trusting in all these different things. Hey, listen, none of those are solutions. They might give information. They might give important data. Sometimes they might even give ideas or solutions. But they're not our knowledge. They're not our confidence. They're not our trust. Be still and know that I am God. Now, when we look at the, the, at the broader verse in 46, man, it is so encouraging for exactly where we are. So let me just hit this, the, hit, hit this at a larger verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble in its dwelling, or whether COVID-19 impacts our family, or we're nervous or fearful about something around us. That obviously was not in scripture. I added that last portion. But we can trust him in all those things. Going on to the next verse. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the words of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He uh, breaks the, the, the bow and shatters the spear. He turns the chariots or he burns the chariots with fire. And then verse 10, be still and know that I am God. And that chapter ends 
with the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So I love that idea, right? That, that here in this section of scripture, this super powerful section of scripture, we can fully understand what God is doing and we can totally trust him. Be still. Just relax because God's got it. And no, have absolute confidence in him that he is God, that he is our ultimate solution, that he is the answer to our questions, right? And so as we go through this time, you know, we can look at this section and I, I find, you know, a section of scripture like this, particularly 4610, it is just, it's so courage inducing, right? Uh, that, that we can really take courage in this idea of knowing, hey, we're children to the creator, right? We're, we're, we're kids of the king, and therefore we can trust in that. So it's courage inducing. But listen, it's also peace giving. And, and I know that during, during a time like this, I was chatting with somebody yesterday uh, who, who really is just super, super nervous about what's taking place. And they're not typically a nervous person, and they were commenting on that fact. You know, we have to make that decision, right? That are we going to give that are we going to give that, that struggle? Are we going to give that problem over to God? And so not only is it courage inducing, but it's, it's really and truthfully peace giving that we can understand the peace of God, because if we're his kids, then he's in us. Right. And, and so, and so we can have that level of confidence. So I love this section of scripture last week in our, in our kind of brief discussion on something directly related to our educational process, we talked about the philosophy of the mitigation of risk. And I hope that it gave you a chance to really kind of understand why we're making decisions. Truthfully, the philosophy of the mitigation of risk comes down to, to really common sense. Um, now, the older I get, the, real, the more I realize that uh, there's really nothing common about common sense. <laughs> Frankly, uh, most organizations and institutions don't have a lot of common sense. Uh, we can certainly watch the media and see a lot of the political wrangling that takes place around a, around a disease that really should be scientific in nature uh, and spiritual in solution. Um, but, but, but when we look at all these political factions, we recognize common sense isn't all that common, uh, unfortunately, in today's world. So this philosophy of the mitigation of risk is really a common sense solution to various problems. And we're using that philosophy as we're answering questions related to what we're going through, right? And so if you didn't get a chance to see kind of a larger explanation of that, feel free, you can pop back in our videos. Uh, it's on our website. Uh, and you can go back in that video and kind of see my explanation of that. But I want to dig a little bit deeper today and talk about suppression techniques. And I want to just say I'm so thankful uh, for our medical advisory board uh, really built up with, with some, some really huge people in the field, uh, some people who are right on the front lines of dealing with, with COVID-19, and uh, they're HCA parents. So they're moms and dads who have kids here at the school. Uh, I was meeting with that group earlier this week, and uh, and this was really one of the big statements from, from this group, this idea of suppression techniques. So there are suppression techniques which we know work, right? We, we know that there are certain things that absolutely work to confining uh, this virus, or to even potentially kind of avoiding it altogether, right? And so there are certain suppression techniques and these suppression techniques fall under this philosophy of the risk, uh, the, the mitigation of risk, right? So under uh, suppression techniques, we know that social distancing works, right? And so uh, e even my wife and I, and we certainly haven't been uh, closed up in our home by any stretch of the imagination. We've been out walking and hiking and biking and, and out doing different things, uh, but we're being safe in it, right? We're not in large crowds. If, if I do have to go into a large crowd, I'm going to wear a mask, you know? And so we know that there are certain suppression techniques that simply work. Distancing works masks when you're in a large group of people, it's just safe. I mean, it just is. It's safe for you, but it's also safe for them. Uh, we know that there are certain cleaning strategies that work. Uh, we have been doing extensive research on all of the different cleaning strategies. And so we know that we're disinfecting our buildings with a subcontractor who is absolutely at the epicenter of this thing. The same subcontractor is cleaning the Brave Stadium and the executive portion of the Brave Stadium, uh, several schools in our area. Uh, they're right on the front lines with us. And so we know that there are cleaning techniques. We know that there are uh, cleaning techniques and then also fogging techniques to be able to use that are safe with kids, fully FDA approved. So these are all suppression techniques that we know work. 
We also know that limiting travel works, right? And so one of the biggest things that we're trying to do here as we reopen our school this year is that we're trying to limit the amount of contact our kids are coming into with other students. We're just trying to limit that contact. That's part of the idea of a suppression technique. So all of these things are kind of common sense solutions to the struggles that we're working through. We're glad to be a part of it. We're so excited to reopen the school year, be back with your kids, right in the center of what we know we're supposed to be doing is God's mission for us. Hey, we really care for your kids. Uh, I'm praying for them every single day and just lifting them up to the Lord. And so let me pray just right now and, uh, and we'll finish our time. Father God, thank you, Lord, so much for your word. Thank you, Father, we can be still and know that you are God. I thank you, Father, that you're the answer to our questions. Uh, and I thank you, Father, that you are courage-inducing and peace-giving. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful Friday. Uh, we're looking forward to a great week. Looking forward to jumping back in with you next Friday.